Hello, very good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited and thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, IT Indoor, for having me here today. I want to start my talk with my favorite quote. And I think this quote is relevant for today's world, this generations and the generations to come. I would like to quote here Mr. Gus Pet, who is one of the leading environmental lawyers in the US and also the founder of Natural Resources Defense Council. He said, I used to think that, and I want you to be, you know, a little careful while and when I'm saying this. Please pay attention here, all the youth out there. I used to think that the top global environmental problems are ecosystem collapse, biodiversity loss, and the climate change. And I thought with 30 years of good science, we could actually solve these problems and address these problems. But I was wrong. The top global pro environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with these, we need cultural and spiritual transformations. And unfortunately, we scientists, we don't know how to do that. Let me show you some visuals. What are these? The man-made garbage mountains. And these are all pictures collected from different metropolitan cities. Okay, As you can see here, now how about this picture? This looks very disastrous, isn't it? It's giving a very wrong uh, feeling. But my dear friends, this is not some fire outbreak happened in some uh, industries or some commercial establishment. This is also a garbage dump site. And this fire outbreak happened last year in Delhi because of the you know, high temperatures and also because of the mismanagement of waste over the past three decades. Now, these dump sites are actually acting as the pollution hubs, the garbage mountains that we actually talked about. These are the offshoot of waste mismanagement that has happened in our country in most of the developing economies, including India, over the past three to four decades. And as a result, we are now witnessing a situation like waste crisis. Now, these dump sites or unsustainable landfills constructed in unscientific manner, operated in unscientific manner, are creating huge environmental loss and also health hazards. So the problem, the real issue is the fact that we at household levels, we are not segregating our waste. So we know that the two major components of uh, municipal solid waste are wet biodegradable waste and the non-biodegradable waste. It also has some infectious sanitary waste. Okay, the sanitary, soil sanitary pads, the diapers, etc., which is contaminated with bodily fluid, and also some toxic domestic hazardous waste, such as broken thermometers, such as the empty cans of uh, air purifiers, or pesticides, herbicides, etc. All of this waste, when it is in mixed form, and it's, it's alarming that even in our country, we are disposing of nearly 50 to 60 percent of the total waste into these landfills or the dump sites. And once these mixed waste, it reaches the dump site, the dump sites start acting as an ecosystem itself, where there is interaction, exchanges between the abiotic and biotic factors, a series of complex biochemical reactions, and as a result of it, we all know that we all are coming from science background, that if decomposition of organic waste is happening in the absence of oxygen, a lot of methane gas is produced in the process. And the entire world is having discussions and deliberations regarding how to reduce the greenhouse gases. Methane gas is a potent greenhouse gas whose global warming potential is 20 more, one times more than that of carbon dioxide. So imagine how much methane gas is emitted in the entire process and there is no monitoring happening at all. Besides methane, there are other obnoxious gases also. What are those? Hydrogen sulfide, H2S, ammonia. And all of you will agree that these gases are really, really obnoxious and they could be carcinogenic. All of these gases, so the people who are living in the close vicinity of these dump site area get constantly exposed to all sorts of toxic gases, 
the gases that we are inhaling. So all of us are directly or indirectly are getting exposed with the, you know, the hazardous impact of waste mismanagement, but the poor are the ones who are get potentially exposed because they are the ones who are living in the close vicinity of those areas, garbage vulnerable points, uh, dump site areas, slums, etc. Beside that, there are other emissions also which are generated because of the waste mismanagement and waste dumping in, into the landfills or the dump sites. Those are the leachate. I hope you we are, all are aware about it. So leachate is a toxic wastewater. It is a concentrated or high strength wastewater which has toxic metals in it and it ultimately contaminates the groundwater since there is no barrier layer you know, between the dump site and the groundwater level or the groundwater. So there is continuous mixing of leachate with the groundwater. Due to the monsoons, the runoff also causes contamination of uh, the adjacent water bodies. Like Now, who are the ones who are creating these garbage mountains? I think we all admitted that we all are waste generators. Somewhere we are the ones who are actually contributing in, in, you know, the entire process of creating these mountains, right? But many of us must be thinking that, oh, but come on, my, I'm generating the waste, I'm paying the user charges, but the government should actually take care of this. So my dear friends, waste management is something which is, you know, it's a shared responsibility. There are few things that we should do at household levels. We will talk about those in the coming slides. And that, you know, there is a responsibility of urban local body and there is a responsibility of government also. Right? So of course, Irresponsible dumping, disposal of waste on the streets, I think you all must have seen it. You know how many people in India are working as waste pickers, as informal sector, in the waste management value chain? We don't have the numbers. But let me tell you that whatever recycling efficiency we are being able to achieve is because of this critical workforce who is working day and night, collecting the recyclables that we throw out of our houses, they are collecting these recyclables, selling it to the scrap dealers, sustaining their livelihoods and also in that process, they are diverting a lot of waste which otherwise would reach the dump sites. So if you want to call, uh, if, you, if I call them as the real green warrior, warriors or the real environmentalist, I might not be wrong. Because actually they are the ones, you don't need a degree in environmental engineering a PhD in environmental, uh, environmental engineering to call yourself an uh, environmentalist. In fact, you look at the people who are working day and night to keep your city clean and you just call them as the green warriors or the people, you recognize them as the green warriors or just give them respect and dignity for the kind of work they are doing for keeping your city clean. Okay, so the, the issue is, if you look at the pattern of waste generation, it is the per capita waste generation is directly proportional to the economic status of a person and also the rate of urbanization. I'll give you my example. I grew up in 90s when I remember coming from a humble middle class family, my family could afford to get me three to four dresses a year. Now when I compare that situation with my present situation when everyone in my family is earning, I don't know when my need based purchasing, it got converted into aspiration based uh, purchasing. When we want to buy this one also, that one also, oh this pair of jeans is really nice, let me get one for me. Let me get another for me and then you know it goes, it piles up and we don't know what to do with that. So, but the waste that Rich is producing, the impact of it is going to be felt by these poor people which we don't want and that's why in the beginning itself I mentioned about sustainable consumption. So before you buy something, just think once where it will reach, what will happen after you know it attains its end of life. Am I going to recycle this? How can I reduce it? All of these factors. This is also in the situation is same everywhere. So I've been working with 15 uh, African countries where I saw similar condition uh, you know, the waste, we are adopting, conventionally adopted this linear economy model. So what is linear economy model? So everything you see around yourself, including all these gadgets, or maybe the sari I'm wearing, the dresses that you guys are wearing, all of it 
you know in the manufacturing process itself it needs extraction of some uh, virgin raw material we take resources from the na uh, nature then we use some uh, um, energy also water and convert that raw material into some useful commodity or product then it comes to the consumer like all of us we use it and when once, once it attains its end of life it is discarded into the environment and goes to the dump sites or landfills whereas the entire world is having discussions that how to transition from this linear economy model to a circular economy model where it is also based on you know uh, take make recycle so linear economy means take make and dispose you take the resources make a commodity use it and dispose it whereas circular economy says take you take the resources use it convert it into useful material use it and then recycle it and in that process the waste is uh, actually considered as a resource instead of a liability and indoor is in fact it's it's really great and fortunate that we are talking about this in indoor so indoor is one of the i mean it's the cleanest city in the country and this has this is a classic model how waste has been you know can be converted into a resource and you know it can help to achieve the model of circular economy and uh, we can also achieve a sustainable business model how do we get rid, rid of these garbage mountains so now this is a very ambitious uh, uh project by the government of india and the swachh bharat mission i hope we all are aware about it swachh bharat we are now in the second phase of swachh bharat mission or clean india mission uh which aims to achieve the vision of garbage free cities when i say garbage free cities what we are trying to say here we are trying to say here that whatever fraction of waste we are generating a significant portion of that waste should be recycled should be converted into resource and only a negligible fraction of waste should ideally reach to the sanitary landfills and also most importantly the garbage mountains that we have already created in the due course of time how to get rid of that so remediation of these garbage mountains has been one of the primary mandate by the government of india by ministry of housing and urban affairs and they are investing the total fund allocation that you are seeing here is huge it is 1,43,000 crore rupees now imagine the mess that we have created in the past just for clearing those dump sites and installing uh, processing facilities for our waste this much amount of money we are spending can we afford that much no remediation of dump sites there is a clear mandate by the government of india that by 2024 or 2026 every city should get rid of their dump sites or the landfill sites the uh, the target deadline is 2026 and the process of remediation is bioremediation now how do we do that you know the peak of the dump site that you are seeing here and i'm recording it from the top and they have excavated and remediated almost equivalent to 6.5 thousand tons of waste lakh tons of waste so this the reason why i'm showing you these pictures is the fact that you know it's very easy and convenient method for all of us to follow the linear economy model and dump the waste you know at a appropriate place or a just mere piece of land where dumping is happening but once it attains this level you know in delhi if i'll give you the example the three dump sites that we have in the national capital uh, okla bhalswa and gazipur it is occupying almost equivalent to 200 acres of land and if we look at the numbers the national numbers it is even mind boggling you see we have to deal with 3149 such dump sites in the country and the remediation cost will you know it will range between 500 to 1500 rupees per ton and if i give you an example delhi alone is having 2.8 crore tons of legacy waste in these buried in these dump sites we just can't is it sustainable do you think that with this this much of uh, i mean uh, this linear economy model will serve the purpose or will it be sustainable where we are we know that the important and precious resources are land resources water resources and also the air that we are breathing is extremely important the answer is no now how this bioremediation takes place first of all the entire dump site is converted into equal size windrows then 
since most of the dump sites are still operational in nature it is it is a heterogeneous mix of all the components including partially decomposed material completely decomposed material and undecomposed material so you have to make it a nice uh, material or nice matrix of uh, stable material so we have to put some bioinoculum over it and allow it to rest for some time and then once it is done you have to use certain kind of uh, equipment or machines such as in this case as you are saying this is a uh, trommel machines basically uh, to do the size segregation of your legacy waste and then these are the fractions that we get of course the cnd waste that can be used in cnd cnd waste is construction and demolition waste uh, material so this can be this can be channelized to cnd waste processing plants then we also get the fine soil like material which can be very well used as a compost or for horticultural application but at the same time we have to be little careful while using these materials because this might have some toxic metal contamination so we have to do proper analysis before we use these materials and this is the rdf fraction or the segregated combustible fraction plastics majorly which can be which can be used as a replacement of virgin raw material in cement factories instead of coal it can be used for you know cement manufacturing how can we do that if you can just look at this uh, you know integrated waste management pyramid where we are starting from the most preferred option is reduce reduction of the waste at the source itself so before buying anything before uh, you know uh, using something which is uh, single used for example before using these bottles just think can i use some reusable bottles instead of this one okay so reduce reduction of the waste at the source itself and reuse is something which comes with behavioral pattern you know it is on a, on us i mean we have to decide if we want to reduce the waste at the source itself if can we reuse it but once the waste is generated and discarded into the environment it becomes as a waste uh, generator our responsibility is limited to just segregating the waste storing the waste into different compartments so that it becomes easy for the urban local bodies or the waste collectors to pick the waste from the source and channelize it to different recycling facilities what and then once the waste is generated should be recycled then recycling can also be of two types upcycling downcycling if you are converting this bottle into bottle that will be a good example upcycling where you are converting this bottle again into a material which has a similar value but what if you are burning this uh, uh, you know water bottle in waste energy plant and then calling it as recycling it it would, would it would be a downcycling example where you are reducing the value of the bottle you are because once a material is burned it is no longer a part of the value chain so the lessons to learn here is of course the first lesson let us not create these garbage mountains let us recycle everything we can let us do our responsibility perform our responsibility as responsible citizens or the waste generators segregate the waste at the source itself and then this way the city can achieve 100% waste treatment efficiency and this way they can also comply with the mandate of the government and achieve the level of garbage free cities as indore is doing and only rejects and inerts should i go reach the dump sites and mind you here first of all we need to remove all the uh, dump sites that we are doing now and construct sanitary landfill engineered landfill which are good for keeping your waste in isolation with the rest of the environment from the surrounding environment and only 5 to 10% of total waste which is generated in the uh, country should ideally reach these sanitary landfills and yeah of course with this i would like to end this session and before generating anything just just watch your waste my dear friends and with this thank you so much for having me here today